O Lord, open our lips, and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. Your faithful servants bless you. They make known the glory of your kingdom. The night has passed, and the day lies open before us. Let us pray with one heart and mind. As we rejoice in the gift of this new day, so may the light of your presence, O God, set our hearts on fire with love for you, now and forever. Amen. Psalm 48 Great is the Lord and highly to be praised in the city of our God. His holy mountain is fair and lifted high, the joy of all the earth. On Mount Zion, the divine dwelling place, stands the city of the great King. In her palaces, God has shown himself to be a sure refuge. For behold, the kings of the earth assembled and swept forward together. They saw and were dumbfounded, dismayed, they fled in terror. Trembling seized them there. They writhed like a woman in labour, as when the east wind shatters the ships of Tarshish. As we have heard, so we have seen, in the city of the Lord of hosts, the city of our God, God has established her for ever. We have waited on your loving kindness, O God, in the midst of your temple. As with your name, O God, so your praise reaches to the ends of the earth, your right hand is full of justice. Let Mount Zion rejoice, and the daughters of Judah be glad, because of your judgments, O God. Walk about Zion and go round about her. Count all her towers. Consider well her bulwarks. Pass through her citadels, that you may tell those who come after that such is our God for ever and ever. It is he that shall be our guide for evermore. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be for ever. Amen. reading from Daniel chapter 8 beginning at verse 15. When I, Daniel, had seen the vision, I tried to understand it. Then someone appeared standing before me, having the appearance of a man, and I heard a human voice by the Ulai, calling, Gabriel, help this man to understand the vision. So he came near where I stood, and when he came, I became frightened and fell prostrate. He said to me, understand our mortal that the vision is for the time of the end. As he was speaking to me, I fell into a trance, face to the ground. When he touched me and set me on my feet, he said, Listen, and I will tell you what will take place later in the period of wrath, for it refers to the anointed time of the end. As for the ram that you saw with the two horns, these are the kings of Medea and Persia. The male goat is the king of Greece, and the great horn between its eyes is the first king. As for the horn that was broken, in place of which four others rose, four kingdoms shall arise from his nation, but not with his power. At the end of their rule, when the transgressions have reached their full measure, a king of bold countenance shall arise, skilled in intrigue. He shall grow strong in power, shall cease fearful destruction, and shall succeed in what he does. He shall destroy the powerful, and the people of the holy ones. By his cunning he shall make deceit prosper under his hand, and in his own mind he shall be great. Without warning he shall destroy many, and shall even rise up against the prince of princes. But he shall be broken, and not by human hands. The vision of the evenings and the mornings that have been told is true. As for you, seal up the vision, for it refers to many days from now. So I, Daniel, was overcome and lay sick for some days. Then I arose and went about the king's business, but I was dismayed by the vision and did not understand it. I will make a way in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. I am the Lord, your Holy One, the Creator of Israel, your King. Thus says the Lord, who makes a way in the sea a path in the mighty waters. Remember not the former things, nor consider the things of old. Behold, I am doing a new thing. 
Now it springs forth. Do you not perceive it? I will make a way in the wilderness and rivers in the desert to give drink to my chosen people, the people whom I formed for myself, that they might declare my praise. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and shall be for ever. Amen. I will make a way in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. A reading from the book of Revelation, chapter 11, beginning at verse 1. Then I was given a measuring rod like a staff, and I was told, Come and measure the temple of God and the altar and those who worship there. But do not measure the court outside the temple. Leave that out, for it is given over to the nations, and they will trample over the holy city for forty-two months. And I will grant my two witnesses authority to prophesy for one thousand two hundred and sixty days wearing sackcloth. These are the two olive trees and the two lampstands that stand before the Lord of the earth. And if anyone wants to harm them, fire pours from their mouth and consumes their foes. Anyone who wants to harm them must be killed in this manner. They have authority to shut the sky so that no rain may fall during the days of their prophesying. And they have authority over the waters to turn them into blood and to strike the earth with every kind of plague as often as they desire. When they have finished their testimony, the beast that comes up from the bottomless pit will make war on them and conquer them and kill them. And their dead bodies will lie in the street of the great city that is prophetically called Sodom and Egypt where also their Lord was crucified. For three and a half days, members of the peoples and the tribes and languages and nations will gaze at their dead bodies and refuse to let them be placed in a tomb. And the inhabitants of the earth will gloat over them and celebrate an exchange presence because these two prophets had been a torment to the inhabitants of the earth. But after three and a half days, the breath of life from God entered them and they stood on their feet and those who saw them were terrified. Then they heard a loud voice from heaven saying to them, Come up here. And they went up to heaven in a cloud while their enemies watched them. At that moment there was a great earthquake and a tenth of the city fell. Seven thousand people were killed in the earthquake and the rest were terrified and gave glory to the God of heaven. The second woe has passed. The third woe is coming very soon. Those who are wise will shine as brightly as the heavens, and those who have instructed many in virtue will shine like stars for all eternity. Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel, who has come to his people and set them free. He has raised up for us a mighty Saviour, born of the house of his servant David. Through his holy prophets, God promised of old to save us from our enemies from the hands of all that hate us, to show mercy to our ancestors and to remember his holy covenant. This was the oath God swore to our father Abraham, to set us free from the hands of our enemies, free to worship him without fear, holy and righteous in his sight all the days of our life. And you, child, shall be called the prophet of the Most High, for you will go before the Lord to prepare his way to give his people knowledge of salvation by the forgiveness of all their sins. In the tender compassion of our God, the dawn from on high shall break upon us, to shine on those who dwell in darkness and the shadow of death, and to guide our feet into the way of peace. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be for ever. Amen. Those who are wise will shine as brightly as the heavens, and those who have instructed many in virtue will shine like stars for all eternity. Let us pray. Lord God, we do continue to lift this world to you. It continues to feel like we don't know what's coming from one day to the next, but help us to remember, Lord, that you are still on the throne. 
And so we give you all the praise and glory. We proclaim that all authority in heaven and on earth has been given to you. We proclaim that you are the one to whom belongs all praise and honour and glory and power now and forever. Lord, we proclaim that you are the one who died and is alive again, that you are the Alpha and Omega, the first and the last. And Lord, help us not just to say those words, but to trust the truth of them in our hearts. Help us in a time where it feels like darkness to hold on to the light. Help us in a time when it feels like evil is dominating to trust that good always wins out in the end, that every good Friday is followed by an Easter Sunday. And so we proclaim your great and glorious name now, trusting in you for all that is going on. But Lord, at the same time, we acknowledge that so much in our world is not of your kingdom and not right. And so, Lord, we pray and lift this world to you. Lord, forgive us for the times when we have bought into systems that aren't of you. Lord, forgive this world for the fact that we have prioritised money or the acquisition of wealth or our own standing, or our own national pride, or anything else above your call for us to bring your kingdom, a kingdom of love and acceptance and justice and peace. Lord, we're sorry for the times when we have turned to violence and war instead of turning towards mutual understanding and care. Lord, we do lift to you all those people who are caught up in war now. And Lord, we pray that you would bring Lord, we pray for our leaders across the world. Lord, we pray for the situation in America. And pray, Lord, for a smooth transition of power without any violence. Lord, we pray that the system in America would be robust enough that that happens smoothly and without any incident. And Lord, we do pray for Donald Trump in his last days of his presidency, and pray, Lord, that you give him wisdom and understanding and a real sense of working for the goodness of all. And, Lord, we pray for President-elect Joe Biden and pray, Lord, that you give him wisdom and graciousness and understanding and strength for the job that he's got in front of him. Lord, we pray for the situation around the world that continues with coronavirus. We give you thanks that... Hopes for a vaccine seem to be coming together. We thank and praise you for that and continue to pray for all those who have the job of figuring out how that vaccine is made safe and then implemented at a wider level. And pray, Lord, that you'd give them true understanding and insight as to how to do that best. And Lord, we do thank you for their efforts. We continue to pray for all those who are affected by coronavirus, for those who are ill, for the doctors and nurses that are looking after them, and families who are grieving. Lord, help us not to turn these situations into statistics on a chart, but instead to remember them as individuals. And Lord, we pray for each and every person directly confronted by coronavirus and pray for your peace that passes all understanding to be with them. Lord, we pray for our own leaders With the exit of Dominic Cummings and other, it seems like there's some um, transition and difficulty going on in that um, centre of our governmental system. And so, Lord, we do pray for wisdom and stability as well as for um, a common understanding of what is best for all within this country. We pray for our Prime Minister, Boris Johnson, and pray, Lord, that you'd give him insight and wisdom. Lord, all of us want the best of all. Lord, we pray for us on the ground. Lord, I pray for the congregations of St. Catherine's and St. Andrew's as we are once again had to stop physically meeting together and some of us have never been able to come back since March. Lord, I pray for each and every one of us that you would remind us that we are united as one family in you. Lord, we thank you for each person and pray Lord for your blessing on them. Lord fill them with your Holy Spirit and Lord I pray that you would not, this would not be a time of us falling apart but a time of us coming closer together. I pray Lord that we'd come back even stronger than before we left. I pray Lord that we would be bigger in every sense of the word, in our commitment to you, in our understanding of you as well as in our numbers. I pray Lord for a real 
strengthening of your church during this time at, at the individual level and at the bigger level. Lord, I pray that you'd enable us individually to come before you in prayer now and to think of the people and the situations that are deep in our hearts. And Lord, in a moment's silence, we name them to you. So Lord, we ask these things in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Heavenly Father, whose blessed Son was revealed to destroy the works of the devil and to make us the children of God and heirs of eternal life, grant that we, having this hope, may purify ourselves even as he is pure, that when he shall appear in power and great glory, we may be made like him in his eternal and glorious kingdom, where he is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Uniting our prayers with the whole company of heaven, as our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. May Christ, who has opened the kingdom of heaven, bring us to reign with him in glory. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God.